If you're drawn to novels that delve deep into the human heart, where faith, doubt, and the search for truth intertwine, Fyodor Dostoevsky's The Brothers Karamazov is a treasure waiting for you to find. But here's the thing, this is no light beach read. This book weighs in at over a thousand pages, and you might not feel like you have the time or patience to go through a lot of pages. No problem, we've got you covered. In just a few minutes, we will summarize the entire Brothers Karamazov. It's a story woven from threads of moral dilemmas, existential questions, and the rawest human emotion, all of it intertwined within the lives of the Karamazov brothers. From passionate Dmitri to skeptical Ivan to compassionate Alyosha, as well as their disreputable father Fyodor Pavlovich, each one represents a different aspect of humanity. Their story isn't just about a family drama. It's a canvas where Dostoevsky paints questions about God, free will, and what it means to be human. So, if you're ready to explore the depths of a novel that challenges the mind and stirs the soul, then watch the video till the end. We're about to take you on an expertise that might just change the way you look at life. Alright, now let's get started. But first, let us know in the comments what novel we should cover next. The story starts in a small town called Skotoprigonyesk. There lived a man named Fyodor Pavlovich Karamazov. Fyodor was quite a character. You could say he loved to enjoy life, maybe a bit too much. He was married twice and had three sons, Dmitri, Ivan, and Alexei. There's rumor of a fourth son, Smerdyakov, who might be his kid too, from a short fling with Lizaveta, a woman known by everyone in town for her odd ways. Now, Fyodor wasn't really into the whole dad thing. He was more about having fun, leaving his kids to pretty much raise themselves with the help of his servant, Grigory. Now, each of Fyodor's sons turned out quite different from him and each other. Dmitri became a strong and disciplined military man. Ivan turned into a smart guy, known for his deep thoughts in writing. And Alexei, the youngest, found peace and a sense of purpose in a monastery learning from a wise man named Elder Zosima. So, the story heats up when Dmitri Karamazov, the 28-year-old soldier, rolls back into town. Dmitri's not just back for a family reunion. He's here for something much more important to him, an inheritance left by his mother, which he believes is rightfully his. But there's a problem. Fyodor Pavlovich, his dad, has other plans for that money. He's not too thrilled to see Dmitri, mainly because he wants to keep the inheritance for himself. And just like that, sparks fly, and they're butting heads over the cash. Seeing no end to their squabble, Dmitri and Fyodor Pavlovich come to think that maybe, just maybe, Elder Zosima could help them sort out their family feud. Alyosha, ever the peacemaker, agrees to set up the meeting, though he's really worried about how it's all going to go down. When they all get to the monastery, Fyodor Pavlovich can't help but be himself, and that means making a scene. He starts mocking the monks, tossing around vulgar stories, and basically making a fool of himself. Dmitri shows up late to this circus, and when he does, things escalate quickly. The argument between Dmitri and his dad goes from bad to worse, proving that their fight isn't just about the money. There's a lot more bubbling beneath the surface. This part of the story really shows us the Karamazov family dynamics. A mix of old grudges, clashing personalities, and unresolved issues. All coming to a head in the least likely of places, a monastery. The drama escalates as Fyodor spills the beans about Dmitri's love life, revealing his affair with Grushenka, a woman both he and his son are smitten with. Ditching his fiancée Katerina Ivanovna, a lady of high class and even higher pride. But Katarina's not just any woman. She's fierce, proud, and her sense of dignity comes from her readiness to sacrifice herself for those she cares about. After a family crisis, she binds herself to Dmitri by offering herself in exchange for financial help, a move that entangles their fates in ways they couldn't have imagined. Katarina's journey takes her to Moscow, into the arms of a generous widow who sees in her the family she's lost, endowing Katerina with a hefty dowry. With a twist of fate, 
Katerina uses part of this fortune to test Dmitri's loyalty, a test he fails spectacularly, chasing after Grushenka with the money meant for another. But the plot thickens when Ivan, caught in the middle of this love triangle, finds himself falling for Katerina during a mission to break off her engagement with Dmitri. Amidst these entangled hearts, Fyodor tries to lure Grushenka back with a promise of money, setting off a chain of events that pulls Alyosha, the peacekeeper, into the fray. Alyosha's visit to Katerina becomes the stage for a dramatic revelation, as Grushenka's true intentions come to light, shattering any illusions of a peaceful resolution. The aftermath sends Alyosha back to the monastery, seeking solace, only to find an unexpected declaration of love from Lise, adding yet another layer to the complex emotional landscape of the Karamazov family. Next, the story took an unexpected turn. One day, Alexei swings by to see his dad Fyodor, who's got his mindset on keeping Dmitri away from Grushenka, the woman both father and son are after. But as Alexei steps out, he stumbles into a scene right out of a schoolyard drama. Six boys hurling stones at one of their own, Ilyusha, calling him names and accusing him of being a scoundrel. Why? Because Ilyusha fought back in a pretty extreme way against a classmate. But when Alexei tries to step in and be the hero, Ilyusha bites him, fueled by a grudge against the Karamazov name. This grudge has roots. It turns out Dmitri embarrassed Ilyusha's dad, Captain Snijeryov, dragging him out of a tavern by his beard over some twisted plan involving Grushenka, debts, and promissory notes. Next, Alexei finds himself at the Koklekovs, where he drops a bombshell. He plans to marry Lise once he leaves the monastery. But the plot thickens when Katerina, ever the noble soul, gives Alexei a chunk of change to help Snijeryov, the humiliated captain, showing there's still some good in this tangled web of relationships. As if family drama wasn't enough, Alexei then gets into a deep chat with Ivan at a tavern, where they tackle nothing less than the existence of God. Ivan, the skeptic, shares his poem The Grand Inquisitor, painting a world where miracles and faith collide with human freedom and disbelief. Meanwhile, danger looms as Smerdyakov hints at Dmitri possibly going to extremes over the money Fyodor promised Grushenka. He nudges Ivan to stay close to home for safety and some family scheming. But life and death march on, as we see back at the monastery with the passing of Elder Zosima. Alexei transcribes Zosima's life story, a tale of nobility, lost love, and spiritual awakening. Yet when Zosima's body begins to decay, doubts and gossip swirl, challenging the faith and beliefs of many, including Alexei. In a twist, Alexei's disillusionment leads him to Grushenka of all people, who shows him unexpected kindness. This encounter, sparked by a mix of revenge and curiosity, ends with a surprising connection between them, hinting that maybe, just maybe, there's more to people than their worst deeds. Haunted by a dream of Zosima, Alexei faces a crossroads, to stay in the monastery or to step out into the world following Zosima's advice to experience life in all its complexity. In the next chapter of our story, we're tackling love, betrayal, a dash of mystery, and a quest for justice that twists and turns in ways you won't see coming. So let's see how deep the rabbit hole goes in the world of the Karamazovs. So, Dmitri, our troubled hero, is caught in a tight spot. He's desperate to pay back Katerina, the woman who once offered him a lifeline with 3,000 rubles. Dmitri's brainstorming every possible way to settle his debts, even considering taking his own father to court for his rightful inheritance. He even approaches Grushenka's influential patron, Samsonov, hoping to sell off his claims to some family land. But Samsonov, seeing through Dmitri's desperation, sends him on a wild goo chase to Lyagavi who turns out to be too soaked in liquor to discuss any business. With time running out, Dmitri attempts to pawn his pistols for some quick cash and approaches Madame Koklekov, hoping she might lend him the needed sum. But Koklekov, who's no fan of Dmitri and wishes Katerina would ditch him for Ivan, dismisses his request and mockingly suggests he try his luck in the gold mines instead. Her rejection stings and Dmitri storms out, 
only to be hit with news that Grushenka might be at his father, Fyodor's house. Fueled by jealousy and desperation, Dmitri rushes to Grushenka's place, only to find she's not there. In a moment of impulse, he grabs a brass pestle, a decision that spells trouble. His hunt for Grushenka leads him back to his father's estate, where a confrontation in the dark leaves the old servant Grigory injured. Meanwhile, Grushenka is caught in her own drama, supposedly meeting with the Polish officer she's engaged to. Dmitri, refusing to let her slip away, follows her trail to Mokroy. There, after a tense card game and revelations of deceit, Dmitri and Grushenka confess their love, planning a future together until the law catches up with Dmitri, arresting him for a crime that could tear everything apart. The trial of Dmitri was going all right, kind of like when you're watching a movie and you think the good guys are winning. But then, Ivan steps up and shocks everyone by saying, I did it. I'm the one who's guilty. You can almost hear the gasp from everyone in the room. Katerina, not wanting Ivan to get in trouble for something he didn't do, jumps up with a letter from Dmitri. In it, Dmitri wrote about being scared he might actually hurt his dad one day. Even though this letter made some folks think twice, the jury, mostly made up of regular folks from the countryside, didn't buy it. They said Dmitri was guilty, and just like that, he was looking at a future in Siberia, cold and far away. After the trial, things take a kinder turn. Katerina decides to take care of Ivan, who's really sick. It's a bit like when you patch things up with someone you've been at odds with. It feels good, right? She and Dmitri also clear the air, and she even starts planning how Dmitri can break out of jail and head to America with Grushenka for a fresh start. In another part of our story, Alyosha's young buddy, Ilyusha, passes away. It's a bit sad, but then Alyosha, being the good soul he is, talks to Ilyusha's friends at the funeral. He tells them in simple words about remembering to love each other and keep the good memories close. It's a sweet moment that turns into a cheer for Alyosha, showing that even in sad times, there's room for hope and friendship. In the end, the story of Karamazovs is a mirror to our own lives, reflecting the choices we face and the bonds that tie us to each other. It's a reminder that, despite our flaws and the trials we have, there's always a chance for redemption, for understanding, and for love to prevail. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. See you in the next video. Until then, best wishes.